We also look into some important changes to the text relay service and how communication services are provided to deaf and hard of hearing people throughout the UK. I recently went to find out more. Thanks to technology, there are now many ways to communicate. But sometimes text or web chat technologies just can't do the job. Despite advances in technology, deaf and hard of hearing people still rely on text relay and there have been various problems using the service. However, Ofcom recently announced that there will be a new version entitled Next Generation Text Relay. This is due to be launched in 18 months time. Text Relay began in the 1980s and it appears to have changed very little from the service that it was originally based on. Back in 1985, See Here showcased what was then pioneering equipment. Making a telephone call could become a problem of the past for deaf people. Now that the Royal National Institute for the Deaf has established our first telephone exchange. Jean Norman has a poodle trimming business and telephone is important for her work. Because she's deaf, she now subscribes to the RNID telephone exchange which helps her to make contact with hearing people who have an ordinary telephone. RNID telephone exchange? Hello, Mike Wilson here. Hello, Mr. Wilson. This is the RNID. I have a call from Jean Norman for you. Thank you. In its day, the RNID telephone exchange service was pioneering. It meant that hearing people could use their phones and deaf people could use text phones to communicate with each other. They would use a third person who would listen, then type, then read and then voice the reply and so forth. The service is still going strong but has undergone some modifications through the years. Back in 1991 when the service was set up it was funded by BT but run by the RNID. The service was called TypeTalk. It was later to change its name to Text Relay but the sign used remained the same. It continues to be funded and run by BT. The service is currently used by many and see here are some deaf people how they feel about the service. Text Relay and Type Talk services have been available for years and it gives deaf and hard of hearing people the ability to contact businesses. It's important for them to have that contact. It gives us access to telephones and we can't say that telephones aren't important because if you deal with hospitals, the NHS, the government departments, employers, you have to be able to use a phone, um, whether it's making an appointment to take your kids to the hospital or doctors, or whether it's, you know, applying for a job. Uh, lots of things are only really available by telephone. I'm a professional carrying out a professional role, which means I need to be in touch with hearing people via the phone. With Type Talk, you type out your message and you get, hello, how are you? And for hearing people, they get quite fed up with this process and feel like they don't want to work with you. And the other bad thing is the prefixes. Um, 18002 to dial a deaf user in front of their full telephone number. It's weird. Um, it's a non-standard dialing and people look at it and go, oh, not sure what that is. And when people see things that they're not accustomed to, they're frightened of it. And these days there's so many scams out there, spammers, junk calls. People don't know that it's not going to charge like a premium rate phone call. With landlines we have text relay as an established service. So why are we focusing on this when there are many other options out there? 
New software, computers, tablets and mobile phones allow us to be constantly on the move and to use this technology. We don't want to be plugged into the wall and stuck in one place. For hearing people, it's like going back to the days when you had just one phone in the hallway and in the winter you had to sit there in your coat and scarf. Then in the 80s came the mobile phone and you could move around. Then in the 90s there were even more technological developments. But as deaf people, we're two decades behind, stuck back in that corner in the hallway. If I'm in town and I want to contact a bank or an insurance company, then I have to do this from home as I have to be tied to my landline rather than be able to use mobile software. See here spoke to Ofcom to find out what changes to text relay are coming into force. We consulted very widely. We've done two public consultations and that followed some fairly extensive market research uh, with disabled users, existing users of the relay service and potential users. The, the current text relay service uh, has about 11,000 users. It's been around for a long time and has declined steadily over time. We think that's largely because it uses a technology and it uses kit that's somewhat out of date. It makes the service less attractive. One of the things that we're trying to do through the launch of Next Generation Text Relay Service, as well as make the service better for existing users, is to be able to attract new users who can use their existing devices and can really benefit from what is a more attractive service that is closer to normal conversation. The main changes for the user that will make for a better experience are that they'll be able to use it on mainstream kit, so on their PCs and their laptops, uh, on mobiles, smartphones and tablets when they're out and about first thing. Secondly, uh, they'll be able to interrupt and have a much more free-flowing conversation precisely because it's using the phone and the internet at the same time. And thirdly, at the moment, if you want to contact somebody on the relay service, you have to dial a prefix. We hear from disabled users and users of the relay service that a lot of people are suspicious about dialing those numbers. Now they'll be able to dial an ordinary number and we think this should make the service a lot more accessible. We're implementing this through a change in what's called the general conditions. Uh, it is an absolute rule that they must comply. If not, we will take enforcement action. Uh, and the consequence, potentially, uh, of non-compliance is uh, a very large financial penalty, a very large fine, up to 10% of group turnover. All communication providers in the UK, fixed or mobile, will need to offer the next generation text relay service to their users in the near future. See here, we're keen to find out what BT, who have provided the service for a long time, think of Ofcom's announcement. A BT spokesperson told us, BT's text relay service has given valued service to customers for more than 20 years, but the lack of compatible mobile handsets limits its use. We're developing a new service for April 2014 that doesn't need specialised terminals and works from PCs, laptops, tablets and smartphones. The option of a presentation number removes the need for a prefix. But relay access is just part of the story. All organisations should take responsibility for ensuring that their services are accessible to all people. Ofcom have proposed changes to the text relay service. So how do deaf people feel about that? Ofcom's recent announcement is good news. Businesses and everyday services can make changes and improvements to make them accessible to deaf, hard of hearing and deafened customers. But over the next eight months, the consultation process must include the views of the deaf, hard of hearing and the deafened community. It's also the case that lots of businesses think that text relay is an easy option. However, deaf people, the hard of hearing and deafened people, don't all like the service and feel that the service should meet their needs and not the other way round. It works both ways. If Ofcom actually managed to implement it, then great. Um, I'm not sure from what it said whether I think they mean BT are going to improve the main text relay service that exists at the moment and then everybody else buys in. I think that's my understanding of it. But I have been arguing with BT since 2004, so, you know, it's a long, long time. Ofcom will also be turning their attention towards video phone services, 
exploring potential developments for establishing more communication services and hubs relating to video phones for deaf people. As soon as Sihir knows more on this, we will, of course, keep you informed.